So we're into 3.2 Solving Limits Part 2, and this is on pages 126 to 139 in your textbook. Our curriculum outcome, once again, is to demonstrate understanding of limits and continuity. Our lesson objectives, number one, to learn different methods to solve limits as x approaches infinity, and two, to be able to choose and apply the appropriate method in order to solve those limits. When we look at limits as x approaches infinity, we need to keep one main thing in mind, and that thing is any number that's divided by a really big number, like infinity, gets so close to zero that we may as well say it's equal to zero. So it's like five divided by 100 is getting pretty small, but if you think of five divided by a million, that's even way smaller, and it keeps on getting really, really close to zero. So when we talk about five divided by an infinite number, um, we're gonna say that it's basically equal to zero. Once again, the method that you choose to solve these limits may change depending on the equation that you're dealing with, so you need to know all the methods that we talk about today. So limits of rational expressions. The first thing that you should try when you have a rational expression and you're trying to find a limit as uh, x approaches infinity is to divide each term by the term with the largest degree. So here's our first example. So we're going to take a look at these uh, every term in this fraction, and we see that the biggest degree is x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each term by x squared. So we get 2x divided by x squared. We get negative 3 divided by x squared. We get x squared divided by x squared, and we get 1 divided by x squared. So when that's all simplified, we get the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over x minus 3 over x squared all over 1 minus 1 over x squared. So now we're going to make this substitution where x is approaching a really, really big number. So x is approaching infinity. And if I put infinity into these things, well, this just becomes 0. That becomes 0. So I get 0 on the top. And I get 1 minus 0 on the bottom. And so I get 0 divided by 1. So the answer here is 0. Um, so if you were to graph this thing using graphing software, you'd find that as x approaches infinity, the limit of this thing is approaching 0, which just means that um, it looks like the x-axis is acting like a horizontal asymptote. Um, and so as x gets really, really big, this graph approaches 0. Our second example, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to skip one of these, uh, the middle step here. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity. Now we're going to divide everything by the biggest exponent, which happens to be x squared, or the big, largest degree. And when I take 2x squared divided by x squared, I just get 2. If I take 5, I get 5 divided by x squared. Um, if I take 3 and divide it by x squared, I 3x squared, sorry, divided by x squared, I just get 3. If I take negative 4x divided by x squared, I get 4 over x. And I get 1 over x squared for our last term there. So now, as x approaches infinity, all these things with x's in the denominators become 0. So I just get a limit of 2 thirds. So again, if you want to graph this thing, you'll see that there's a horizontal asymptote at about 2 thirds. Well, not at 2 thirds, exactly at 2 thirds. So as x gets really, really big, this graph approaches that horizontal asymptote of 2 thirds. So we're going to find the limits of radical expressions next. And the thing you need to keep in mind with these expressions is that the square root of x squared is actually absolute value x. And we use absolute value x because we know that the square root of x squared is either positive or negative x. And because we can do two different limits, we can take the limit as x approaches positive infinity, or we could take the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Um, if x is approaching negative infinity, then we're going to be taking the negative value of x. If x approaches positive infinity, we're going to be taking the positive value of x. So here's our first example. It says the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the square root of x squared minus 5x all over 3x plus 2. So I'm going to do something algebraically that you probably haven't seen before. But what it is, is I'm going to take out a greatest common factor from these two terms on the top. Uh, and that's going to be an x squared. But that stays underneath the root sign. And then I'm left with 1 minus 5 over x. And in the bottom, I get 3x plus 2. Now, because I have um, x squared underneath the root sign, I can take the square root of that thing. And I now know that that is absolute value of x. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of uh, absolute value of x. And then underneath the root sign, I still have 1 minus 5 over x. Now the whole point of doing that is so that this x will cancel out with an x in the bottom, but I don't have an x in the bottom yet. So I'm gonna take a greatest common factor out of the denominator and that's just gonna be regular x. So I get absolute value x and then I still have one minus five over x underneath the root sign. 
And then I'm going to take out an x here, so I'm left with 3 plus 2 over x. Now these two things can cancel each other out, but I'm going to be left with a negative 1 because this is actually negative x. So when I cancel it out, I still have a negative 1 left over. So I get the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative 1 times absolute value of, or sorry, square root of 1 minus 5 over x all over 3 plus 2 over x. Now, when I substitute in my infinity, my really big number, this becomes 0 and this becomes 0. And what I, what I get is negative 1 times square root of 1 divided by 3, which is just negative 1 third. So again, if you want to graph this thing in like desmos.com, um, you're going to find that, there, that this graph approaches a height of negative one third as x approaches negative infinity, so as x goes to the left. Now my second example here, I've got the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared plus 4 over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Now what I'm going to do is going to change it up a little bit because I need to take the square root of um, the... I guess the the biggest degree in the denominator. So what I'm gonna have to do then is not divide everything or take out a greatest common factor of x squared like I did in the first example. I'm gonna take out the greatest common factor of x to the fourth. And then I get four plus um, x squared divided by x to the fourth is just one over x squared and then one over x to the fourth. In the top I still have x squared plus four. Now, the whole reason I'm going to take the square root of x to the fourth, um, because that is x to the fourth, I get x squared when I take the square root of that. And underneath, I still get 4 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth. In the top, that means I'm going to have to cancel this x squared out with something, so I'm going to take a greatest common factor of x squared out. And that leaves me with 1 plus uh, 4 over x squared. Now you might be wondering why I'm not putting this in absolute value signs. Well, because this thing is squared, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Um, once you square it, it becomes positive anyway. So now I get these two things canceling each other out. And what I get is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 4 over x squared divided by the square root of 4 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth. Now when I make my substitution, I let x approach infinity. This becomes 0, this becomes 0, this becomes 0. So I get 1 over the square root of 4. I guess I should have been doing this appropriately and putting in equal signs. And that gives me a limit of a half. So again, graph this thing. You're going to find out that it's approaching half as x approaches infinity. So in summary, you need to remember that any fraction with a really big number in the denominator can essentially be replaced with a value of 0 because we're talking about when x approaches infinity. Anything divided by infinity, like 5 divided by infinity, is basically 0. And if you're looking at a rational expression, you will want to divide every term by the term with the highest degree. That's key. If you're looking at a radical expression, you will want to remove a greatest common factor from under the root sign so that you will be able to take the square root of that thing. Um, and so, like we said, if we're going to take the square root of x to the fourth, that means uh, you're going to get x squared, but you want to make sure that you've taken out an x to the fourth out of every term from underneath that root sign. And if we're going to take the square root of x squared, we know that the result there is plus or minus x, and we've written that as absolute value x. And then you need to consider whether x approaches infinity or negative infinity, because if it approaches negative infinity, then we know when we take the square root of it, it's going to be a negative x. I guess what we didn't talk about, and we probably should for a quick second, is that the uh, cube root of x cubed we know is x, but the cube root of negative x cubed is negative x. So that's uh, something that might come into play as well. So your assignment is on pages 138 to 139. You can do questions 40 to 51 now. Um, good luck, and we'll see you in class.